This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So today I decided to refine this old silver ring along with some silver jewelry that I found and transform it into a really beautiful silver mirror, which turned out to be an incredibly cool and beautiful process, and I actually wanted to do it for a very long time. You see, I was always fascinated by mirrors and how they have a ton of really cool properties just by reflecting light, and I always wanted to make one myself, but the idea of making something like this always seemed very difficult to me. I just always assumed that making a mirror is some exotic and complicated process that can only be carried out in an industrial setting, but after one day randomly deciding to give it some more thought, I found out that it isn't all that difficult. In theory, all that I'm going to need is just some silver, and using a lot of chemistry magic I can deposit it on a glass surface making a mirror, which when put that way doesn't seem too bad at all. I also specifically need to use silver here, because it is literally the perfect thing for making mirrors, due to being a very unreactive and reflective metal, so to begin I of course have to get some of it, and since it isn't something that you can just get from the hardware store, I had to get creative. After a lot of searching around the house, I found some old and unused silver jewelry, along with a silver coin, all of which already consist of some rather pure silver, as indicated by the characteristic black tarnish. Some of the jewelry is also marked with the number 925, which means 92.5% pure silver. However, the mirror making process is really sensitive to impurities, so first I will have to clean the silver up, or in other words, refine it. To do that, the first step is to dissolve all the jewelry in acid, and this acid of course can be just some easy to get one, but this procedure specifically requires the use of concentrated nitric acid, which I can only get by making it myself. I already showed how to make it from wood or fertilizer in previous videos, but now I have to make some really high purity stuff, and before I begin, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one advanced website building platform made to allow entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Squarespace allows you to easily create beautiful websites whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand and use them to engage with your audience and sell anything from products to your time. Squarespace offers a variety of incredibly useful features like their flexible website templates that allow you to easily turn your website idea into reality, which in my opinion is just amazing. Squarespace also allows you to interact with your audience through email campaigns which are an amazing way to drive sales and build connections. Their incredible blogging tools also allow you to easily share stories, photos or videos with your audience, which is a really useful feature that I myself really enjoy. For a free trial, head to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash amateurchemistry to save 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, to make the pure nitric acid, I decided to go with the classic potassium nitrate method, and to start I added half a kilo of it to a big boiling flask, followed by 280 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid which I extracted from a car battery in a previous video. The whole mixture quickly became orange and got rather hot, which indicated a reaction going on, in which potassium nitrate exchanges the nitro group with sulfuric acid, forming nitric acid and potassium bisulfate. This reaction is overall very efficient and produces high purity nitric acid with just a few percent of water in it. To get it out of this mix, I set everything up for a simple distillation, and when assembling the apparatus, I greased every joint with some concentrated sulfuric acid, which is pretty much the only thing that can stop the algae nitric acid vapors. I then started the distillation, and after a while, some yellow liquid started collecting in the receiving flask, which was now getting flooded with this scary dark orange gas, which is nitrogen dioxide created by the breakdown of nitric acid, and it is responsible for coloring the whole reaction mixture and the distilled acid yellow. It is also rather toxic, so this procedure has to be carried out outside or like in my case, in a fume hood. After a few hours, the acid stopped distilling over, leaving me with quite a substantial amount of it. In the boiling flask, there was also a solid brick of potassium bisulfate, which I can tell just by looking at it, will be a pain to get out. Anyway, the freshly made nitric acid is probably already very pure, but just for my sanity, I decided to redistill it, which left me with around 200 milliliters. Apart from some water and nitrogen dioxide dissolved into it, it is now incredibly pure and perfect for refining metals. When it comes to its concentration, I can determine it by measuring its density, and using this handy dandy online chart, it came out to be around 94%, which is just amazing and actually higher than I expected. 
Now with the acid ready, I can start dissolving the silver. Along with the jewelry, I also have this old silver coin which is still perfectly fine and honestly it's quite sad to destroy it, but at least it will be sacrificed for science. The same goes for this silver earring which I completely obliterated before dissolving just because and it turned out to be weirdly satisfying to do. Anyway, now to dissolve the silver, I put it all into a large beaker and slowly added a random amount of my homemade nitric acid which I felt was appropriate and now it logically should start dissolving the jewelry, but that actually didn't happen. You may think that the acid is bad or the jewelry isn't made out of silver after all, but this actually just confirms the strength of my acid because when it is really concentrated, it forms something called a passivation layer on metals which prevents it from reacting further. You can nicely see that on this piece of copper, when I add some water to dilute the acid, the passivation layer goes away, allowing for a more vigorous reaction. With this in mind, I added some distilled water to the silver containing beaker and almost immediately the reaction just took off. It produced a metric freak ton of nitrogen dioxide, which quickly filled my fume hood and if I didn't have it, I would be in serious danger, because as I already said, nitrogen dioxide is really bad for your health. Also, I hope it goes without saying, but this whole procedure is really dangerous and you shouldn't attempt it at home without adequate safety gear and ventilation. Anyway, in terms of the ongoing reaction, nitric acid attacks the silver and any other metal alloyed with it, which is almost always copper, making everything go into solution as the nitrate salts and producing tons of nasty nitrogen dioxide. The presence of copper can be easily identified by the beautiful blue color of the solution, which is characteristic of copper salts. Anyway, I periodically added more water to help the acid chew through the silver faster and when everything dissolved, I was left with this really beautiful silver and copper nitrate solution from which the silver one was already precipitating as these nice crystals. Now, before separating the silver from this solution, I wanted to clean it from the excess nitric acid which would later interfere with the purification process and to do that, I decided to consume it using some copper. For that, I didn't want to use dirty, low-grade copper which would contaminate everything, so I brought this ultra-pure copper speaker cable, which exists only because some people think that it enhances the quality of sound, and while I am not really sure of that, it's great for chemists because these cables are an accessible source of pretty much 100% pure copper. To get it out of the cable, I cut a piece of it and stripped off the plastic coating, which has always took forever, and now with the copper ready, I rolled it into a coil and added it to the silver solution. The remaining nitric acid quickly reacted with it, producing more nitrogen dioxide. After the first copper coil had almost completely dissolved, I added a second one and it didn't dissolve all the way through. Instead, some silver started precipitating on it, so to get everything back into solution, I added a tiny bit more nitric acid. When all of the metal had dissolved, I quickly filtered everything through a coffee filter, leaving me with a pretty clear silver and copper nitrate solution, along with these two small springs that didn't dissolve and are probably made out of something resistant to the acid. Anyway, to get my silver out of this solution, I have to precipitate it out with a more reactive metal, which in this case will be copper. This will work because silver, being rather unreactive, gladly turns into a metal from its salts when something more reactive is present. Copper also isn't all too reactive, but I will use it since I already have it in solution and own these just the copper cables. I however didn't want to use them in the raw form, because the copper will get consumed in the process, making the tiny strands of wire crumble and contaminate the newly formed silver. To get around that, I have to make the copper have less surface area and this is best accomplished by melting it down into solid lumps. Now, you might have already noticed that I have a real good metal melting furnace that I used for example in the white phosphorus video and it would be perfect for melting the copper, but unfortunately it is in my other lab which I don't have access to now, so instead I will use this cheap Chinese metal melting set along with this chunky blowtorch. I am not too sure about the quality of this set, but I guess that it can't be that bad. And to start, I made some more copper wire coils and got my good old lab support brick, which you might remember from the Cubane series. It will protect the fume hood from being obliterated by the blowtorch, and with everything ready, I got one copper coil into the crucible and started blasting it with a blowtorch. It was fortunately hot enough to melt the copper, but even after a few good minutes, it didn't seem to liquefy all of it, so I poured out what had melted into a mold, leaving me with this small bead. It wasn't the greatest, but meant that I could at least melt some copper. Also, my blow door really suffered the process, and now I have to use this clip to be able to turn it on, which is really the peak of my DIY skills. 
Anyway, I melted a few more copper coils which took forever, in the end leaving me with 36 grams of some nice and solid bits of pure copper. My good old brick had also completely fallen apart by all the heat, which is incredibly sad, but I fixed it with some tape and now it's as good as new. Anyway, before I used the copper beads to precipitate the silver, I wanted to get rid of this ugly black oxide layer that forms when copper is heated, and to do that I just used some dilute hydrochloric acid, which made the beads become simply beautiful. They are now ready, and to start I dipped one in the silver solution making it instantly get a grey silver coating which was really cool, and after playing with it for a while I got all the beads into the solution. I then got everything onto a hot plate with steering to agitate the copper making the whole process happen faster, and after a few minutes there was a layer of some grey silver powder on the bottom of the beaker. The reaction going on here is just a simple single displacement where copper reacts with silver nitrate precipitating out the silver as a metal and producing copper nitrate. This reaction even with my ingenious steering strategy is very slow and I will have to leave it overnight and while it's doing its thing I have to inform you about an online chemistry supply store that provides me with many chemicals, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells various reagents, laboratory equipment and many other things and there is a link to their page in the description. Anyway, when I came back in the morning, the solution turned green for some reason, and now all the silver should be floating around as a powder. To get it out of the beaker, I vacuum filtered everything and removed the now much smaller beads of copper using a pair of tweezers. I then washed the silver a few times with a lot of distilled water to get rid of any leftover copper nitrate, and now I could theoretically start making the mirror using this powder, but since it is rather ugly, I wanted to melt it down and get some real silver chunks, so I just used the exact same setup as before and melted some of it in this graphite mold. It all nicely melted into a small bead which quickly got covered with a black oxide layer indicating the presence of copper. This means that even though I did everything in my power to prevent it, some copper still contaminates the silver, but this shouldn't be too much of an issue, because I will just carry out an extra purification step later. Anyway, I removed the oxide layer from the silver bead, revealing this nice silvery surface underneath which looked really cool. I then melted out of the remaining silver powder into these grey beads, which I then tried to melt together but was only partially successful and in the end I had this very crappy looking chunk of some rather pure silver. It weighs 35.5 grams, which is about what I expected to get from all the jewellery. It is also quote unquote refined, meaning that it definitely has less copper and impurities than it had before, but it's still a far cry from pure silver. It should however work alright for making the mirror if I later do some more purification steps and now to begin the mirror making process I need to turn all this silver into silver nitrate. It's the same thing that formed before when I dissolved the jewelry and it is essential for making mirrors because it is rather stable and unlike a lot of silver salts very soluble in water. To start making it I dissolved the whole chunk of silver in my nitric acid. It went pretty much exactly the same as before so I won't get into much detail here. In the end this solution ended up being really blue from all the copper, but I didn't bother too much and to clear it from any impurities, I passed it through a coffee filter and got it into a fridge to cool down, which reduces the silver nitrate solubility, allowing it to crystallize out. When I came back some incredibly beautiful crystals appeared, I vacuum filtered them out and to get more I boiled down the filtrate and again got it into a fridge to end up with a lot of lower grade silver nitrate crystals. They were much more blue than the previous ones, so I decided to recrystallize everything to get rid of the copper, however before doing that I got some silver powder which I made by precipitating all the silver waste solutions with copper and dissolved it in nitric acid to make some more silver nitrate. I then combined this freshly made solution with all the crystals and got everything into a beaker. The solution was now much less blue than before, indicating less copper contamination and to get the silver nitrate out of it I again boiled it down and put it into a fridge to cool. When I came back I was just amazed by the gorgeous snow like crystals that formed. When I filtered them out they were free of the blue color which was just amazing. I dried them in the oven leaving me with 30.67 grams of some really pure silver nitrate. I still had a lot of it in solution and to get the silver out of it I again precipitated it out with some copper which formed these incredibly cool metal crystals that I then melted down into a 12 gram bead of this time very pure silver metal. After all this struggle I managed to refine the scrap silver jewelry into some pure silver and silver nitrate which is honestly a big achievement and now I can finally make some mirrors. To do that I will have to turn my silver nitrate into something called Tollens reagent which is a chemical often used in laboratories to detect something called an aldehyde group. It is really useful but I won't dive too deep into how it works because all I want is just to make some mirrors. 
To start, I first dissolved 8.5 grams of my homemade silver nitrate in about half a liter of distilled water, which made a weirdly cloudy solution. It will be a stock solution, and I will use small portions of it to prepare the Tollens reagent, because it has to be used quickly after making it, since with time it decomposes to the incredibly explosive silver nitride, which we definitely don't want happening. Anyway, I got about 100 ml of the silver nitride solution into a small beaker, and to turn it into the Tollens reagent, I added in 7 ml of a 23% ammonia solution. The ammonia reacts with silver nitrate, producing silver oxide, which then immediately reacts with more ammonia, forming the Tollens reagent and somehow making the cloudiness go away. After adding the ammonia, I also added 1.8 grams of sodium hydroxide to keep the pH basic, which is crucial for the mirror to form. Now with the Tollens reagent ready, I had to choose what I wanted to make the mirror in, and I picked this crystallizing dish. I also made these pieces of glass with one side protected with tape to ideally make some smaller mirrors, and got them into the dish. Now to activate the Tollens reagent, I added about a gram of glucose to it, which is a sugar containing an aldehyde group. Normal food grade sugar should also work here, and as soon as the Tollens reagent is mixed with an aldehyde containing thing, metallic silver starts to deposit everywhere. I got the mirroring solution into the crystallizing dish, and in hindsight, I should probably have dissolved the glucose and added it to the Tollens reagent in the dish, because everything started to react while still in the beaker. This fortunately didn't cause much trouble, and the solution started going from grey to yellow, while a thin metallic layer deposited on the dish's walls. It was really mesmerizing to watch this process, and when it didn't look like any more silver was being deposited, I drained the muddy solution into a beaker and washed everything with distilled water. I then got the glass pieces out of the dish and peeled off the tape, revealing a beautiful silvery layer beneath. It of course wasn't perfect, and for some reason, the silver layer was just thin enough to let some light through, which was really interesting. To protect the newly made mirrors, I coated their backs with this colorless acrylic paint, which can also be substituted for nail polish. Anyway, now it is time for the grand finale and the reason why I even started this project, and that is to create a big and perfect mirror that would actually be usable and not just a cool demonstration. I always wanted to make something like this, and to start, I had to find a piece of glass large enough. After some searching, I came across this random photo frame with a thin glass panel that would be just perfect, and I removed it from the frame and thoroughly cleaned it. I then prepared another batch of the Tollens reagent, and this time dissolved the glucose separately. I also decided to add it to when everything else was ready, and now the only thing stopping me from making the mirror is that I don't exactly know how to pour the Tollens reagent on top of the glass panel. You see, I tried making this contraption using some extra thick tape, which seemed to work at first, but then just gave up. I also tried using the good old silver tape, but it too gave up, so I got mad and instead borrowed a glass baking tray from my mom and decided to make the mirror in it. I got the glass panel and the Tollens reagent into the tray, and then added the glucose solution. The whole process went similarly to the last time, and when it finished, I drained all of the wastewater and thoroughly washed the mirror with distilled water. I then got it onto some paper towels and dried it using my trusty computer fan, which looked really satisfying, and then applied a very generous coat of the acrylic paint. When it dried, I got my first look at the unfinished mirror, and it already looked gorgeous. I then removed the upper silver layer using some dilute nitric acid, revealing a pretty much perfect mirror below, and then rinse the glass using some water, and oh my was it beautiful. I mean, it looked just like a real store-bought mirror, and when I got it back into the frame, I was just out of words. I literally managed to create a real perfect mirror from some old jewelry, which is just one of the coolest things I have ever done. This mirror is so great that it doesn't let light through like the other ones. It also beautifully reflects a laser and mirrors objects, and it is just generally awesome. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this beautiful and quite challenging project. Also, if you want to support my work, you can like and subscribe to my channel. And if you are feeling more generous and want to see some extra content, I highly advise you to become a Patreon. Also, as always, a big thank you goes to all my wonderful Patreons who helped me create these interesting projects. And see you guys in the next video.